Hey guys, John here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this Silent Hill creepy sounding patch that I made in Poison. All right, so I think you get the idea. So the concept of this patch is obviously to do something creepy, Silent Hill style. So there's a couple things to keep in mind that I wanted to think about when I was creating this patch. So first of all, I kind of wanted to cut off the low end and a little bit of the high end and kind of make it more focused. And so it's kind of more radio, old radio-ish kind of sound, which is kind of reflected here in this EQ. I brought down a little bit of the mud with this fourth band and then the sixth band is kind of cutting off that top end as well. So that kind of harshness as well. Next, I wanted to have almost a random pitch change all the time and kind of make it sound like it's it's old and it's kind of like speeding up, slowing down in pitch and kind of have that vibe to it as well. Some big reverb as well to that and also some, some saturation, some distortion. You could also even enhance this a little bit by adding some of that tape sound as well if you want to, but that's totally up to you. I didn't do that. I felt, I felt it was cool with the soft clipper. So let's dive into this as, and let's turn off our effects here to kind of listen to it without the added effects. Because with this patch, we're going to be stepping out a little bit of our comfort zone and doing some effects on the channel itself. So a little bit more work involved, but generally it's going to come with more, with a better result in, in the end. So let's turn off our effects here on the channel and also our reverb. And let's take a listen to see what it sounds like just coming out of Poison itself. So here's the main melody here. So the core melody, the core kind of creepiness is there. The rest of the stuff is just an enhancement to really kind of bring it to life, which is like the final screws that really change it. So here's it with just out of Poison. Now with our effects as well and our reverb. So we're cutting off of that lows, the highs to kind of make it a smaller sound. And then they having the reverb there to kind of push it away a little bit. So it's not right in front of our face and then the modulation of the pitch as well. So before we dive into the effects on the channel, let's kind of go from the beginning and kind of work our way through all the way here. Cause this is, this is more of the end process. So let's turn these off for now and let's just dive into Poison itself. So with Poison, let's turn off our delay. We have our delay here. Let's turn that off. So Starting at the top here, we have one unison, so we're not even worrying about unison at all because it didn't seem like it made sense for this patch, so we can ignore all this top spot here. Our transposition is going to be zero, so we didn't change any of that. Same with our microtune, no change. The gain is kind of arbitrary. You can boost it or cut it depending on what you want. If you don't feel like making this whole patch, I've included the patch in the video description so you can download it if you'd like to do that. So moving on, we didn't use any MIDI, so we can ignore this window. We didn't use the LFO at all, so we can ignore this, but we do start using this envelope here. So it's going to be the destination for the for the envelope. Uh, it's going to be on the cutoff here. And the amount is going to be small at minus 25. And our attack is going to be five milliseconds in the decay sustain release all the way at the top. So this effect here has quite a dramatic change. And this is just at minus 25. So let's go to default and let's play and see what it sounds like at our main melody here. So it's kind of noisy, a little bit too much going on. And listen to what happens when I bring it down to minus 25. Back to zero. So a lot of that noise, that hash at the top is there and we like that, but we just don't want too much of it. And this this envelope on the on the attack here is really going to be helpful to kind of bring that down. So this amounts down 25% or negative 25%. Next up, we have our main amplifier envelope. So this attack is going to be eight milliseconds. The decay is going to be 2,862 milliseconds and the sustain is zero. And then the release is 83. So if we hit a note, it's pretty, it's pretty quick. A lot of the extra stuff is basically just kind of the effects, the delays, it's kind of carrying everything else on and holding the notes themselves. Because if we had too long of a release, it would just clutter up the sound quite a bit. 
Now, a lot of the creativity of this patch become, becomes using both oscillators in addition to the noise. So I have this noise up at about 50%, and this is kind of simulating that tape saturation sound a little bit. It's kind of adding to that. It's not a clean signal. It may be old. It may be kind of broken, but it's still kind of working, which is perfect for this. So noise is at 50%. The oscillator balance is at 57, so it's going to be leaning a little bit more on oscillator B. So the first oscillator, oscillator A, is going to be a pulse width. And it's, as you can see, this little light here is selected on pulse, and it's going to be all the way to 100%. So let's remember this is at 57%, so this is just oscillator A with a noise. So we, that we kind of wanted that bell sound, almost a little kind of Nintendo-y, square wavy-ish kind of sound, if that makes any sort of sense. But we don't want that much of it. So once we go back to 57% here, we kind of get that sound a little bit. The oscillator B is also going to be a pulse wave as I have this selected here, but this is going to be at 70%. 70, 70%. The pitch is going to be up 12, so one octave above oscillator A. And then the detune is going to be at plus 13. And keep in mind, this making this wave or these both waveforms together and blending took a little bit of time to kind of get it right because if you if I didn't, it would be too belly, it'd be too Nintendo-y, it'd be kind of too cheesy. So playing with those a lot kind of helped. I did have a little bit of fun with the sync feature, so take a listen to how that changes the sound here. It almost adds that music box kind of sound to it. So definitely put on sync if you think that sounds better. I left it off because I was like, ah, it might be a little bit too distracting with everything going on, but definitely a cool feature there. Now, moving on to the filter, we have the cutoff at 57%, the resonance at 11, the keyboard tracking at 40, and the keyboard tracking at 40 is mainly because we want to have that low end playing. And then once we get to the high notes, the filter should open up a little bit to kind of give it a little bit more air. So that was kind of my thought process about that. Velocity tracking is a zero because I didn't feel it was necessary for this. And it's going to be on a low pass. No arpeggiator. Turn that off. Don't even worry about that. Next, we are going to have our delay on. And this is also more so to add some some fullness, I guess, so it's not so closed off of a sound. And the time is going to be 2-4 for both channels. Feedback is 34%, so I brought that pretty much down from the uh, from the standard or the default. The mod depth, 30%, low cut, 34%, high cut, 100 and then the wet, 32%. I messed around with course, but I felt like it wasn't appropriate for this patch, so I left that off and then didn't worry about this transcate at all. So that's basically this patch in a nutshell. Now the kind of more complex style comes in. So we have this sound. Now, if we turn on our effects here, so let's turn on our main effects and turn these other ones off at first. And let's take a look at just our EQ. So having this off, that's just the synth. Now, if we bring in this EQ, So this is almost a little bit too high resolution if the EQ is not on there. It sounds, it sounds too rich, too, too full spectrum. So we kind of want to shrink that down a little bit. Make the sound a little bit smaller, almost like a music box kind of feel to it. Because music boxes don't really have subs, so... And next, this is where the fun part comes in. So next up, we're going to be using the Fruity Delay 3, and we're not going to be using this as a traditional delay. So generally, let's open up a fresh Fruity Delay here, and, or Fru Fruity Delay 3 here. So this is how it comes out of the box. And below this is what I have changed. So as you can see, this dry is going to be all the way gone. So no dry, no level. There's going to be no rate. And what else did we change here? No level. I guess you can kind of look at this and see what it's all changed. The tempo sync is going to be off. And so basically we turn this rate down, turn this tempo sync off, turn this down, turn our level down and turn our dry down. And that's basically what we're going to have here. So there's the kind of the core important things to change first of this fruity delay three. So let's delete the one that we don't need. Now the effect that we want is to have this time being moved. And when you move it, it kind of has that pitch random change that really makes it kind of creepy. So when we turn this on, and I'll have to turn on Fruity Peak Control as well, we'll get to that in a second, but look at this knob, how it's just moving randomly. Now that's no automation going on in the session, it's just a random 
random change happening with a speed controller that's always spitting out random values. So the way to get this set up here is we have our next slot, we open up the Fruity Peak controller and we go back to our delay and we are gonna right click this and then we're going to go to link to controller. And under this internal controller, you select this and you select peak controller LFO and then you hit accept. So now this knob is going to be driven by this peak controller here. And you go to our shape here in our LFO and then that's where this is selected as random. And then you can change the speed here so we can drastically change this. So this is at 0.46, so we'll remember that. So let's move this back here. And then the volume of this is really going to affect how much this wiggles. So it's really wiggling in this area right here on the fruity delay. But if we want more and make it exaggerated, it'd sound like this. So this is at about 13%. So obviously it's very exaggerated and kind of breaks the sound. So just a little bit of that is to taste. So keep that in mind. Next, what I did is you can also see this phase knob here wiggling as well. Now this phase is also being triggered or controlled by this same plug and kind of confusing, but I right click this as well, link to control and selected the same option here and accept. So this random LFO is also driving this phase knob because changing the phase while you play it makes a weird kind of sound as well. So without those, you have the smallness of the sound and you have the creepiness of the melody, but you don't really have the pitch changes and the jittery of the phase. And generally, I'm not a big fan of using randomized stuff, but I think in this scenario with doing some small little pitch changes and some phase stuff, it kind of makes a cool thing because it's going to be overall the same randomized, yes, but still for the most part going to be the same type of sound. Moving on, we have the Soft Clip 5 here. That's a preset I chose for the uh, for the Soft Clipper here. And you can also change the curve a little bit, but I felt this was fine. I drove the pre all the way up, the mix all the way up, and kind of brought the post down a little bit so it wasn't going to be too loud. And without the uh, Soft Clipper, it sounds like this. Now with. Without with a very subtle change but i feel it's necessary and the very very last thing to do is add some reverb and make it in kind of a big open space so if you're familiar with a lot of my stuff i love vintage verb here from valhalla and this is going to be on a large plate color 1970s i felt the older is kind of more appropriate and i kind of played around with a little bit of uh settings here to, to kind of come up with a pretty close sound and then uh, we put it on our channel here and send this sound to our reverb so let's turn this on here and that pretty much completes the whole thing so hopefully you stuck with the whole video i know it's a little bit more in depth than our usual sound design videos but sometimes it can really make a sound come alive when we add some external stuff to it some external modulation and you know just kind of creativity creatively if that's even a word think about what we want the sound to be so from a to b really or a to z it's got to have that creep melody which it does and then it's got to kind of cut off the low ends high ends got to have a bell kind of sound pitch modulation some distortion put it in a big room like this reverb and you basically have something creepy So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.